every single one of these notes on this keyboard has a relationship with each other. It's a lot like language. If I were to go, doesn't really mean anything to you. Like a baby can go goo goo ga ga, and a baby could also go up to a piano and, but that's not communication. We do music to communicate. So what do we do with language? We created an alphabet. What do we do with music? We created scales. The most important scale is, well, arguably, C major. You might have noticed C major only uses white notes. We labeled these white notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then the black ones are the sharps. Our way of thinking of C major rather than all white notes is the relationship that these white notes have to each other. So, those are two whole steps. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. All together you have whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. There's another very important scale when producing an FL Studio. That one is the minor scale. As you can see, also white notes. This is because the minor scale is what's called a mode of C major. The major scale is specifically called the Ionian mode, and the minor scale is specifically called the Aeolian mode. All a mode means is that you've taken the scale and moved the starting point. There are seven modes because there are seven notes in the scale of C major. You can easily find any mode in relation to C major because you just start on that note and play all of the white notes. So you can kind of inherently link the keys with their specific modes. So there are three ways you can think about each of these notes. You can think about them as the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Or think about them as numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, or modes. A Ion modes are hard to remember. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian. Another deeply important concept is to understand what this number does up here. This number directly controls your tempo, or BPM, beats per minute. Essentially, your BPM is how many times one of these sections will play every minute. So with this BPM and this layout, this kick would play 130 times in one minute. The reason that there are four sections is because this is a 4-4 four, four time signature, meaning that there are four beats each bar. A whole note would play once in a bar. A half note would play twice every bar. A quarter note would play four times each bar. An eighth note would play eight times each bar. A sixteenth note would play each one of these little sections meaning 16 times each bar. So each one of these little bars is four beats. Your time signature decides how many times those beats happen a minute. If you want a slow beat, you do a slow BPM. If you want a faster beat, you do a faster BPM. Notice how the bars are numbered on here. One, two, three, Last four, thing we did five. Before we went over to time signature is we thought about each note as a number. Now let's do that again to grasp a concept called interval. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One. So, the interval is the distance between each set of notes. Your first interval, this is a whole step. Major third. Perfect fourth. Perfect fifth. Minor sixth. Major seventh. Octave. It can be useful to remember the sound of the distance between these notes. Is if you know that sound, then you can pre-visualize in your FL Studio what it's going to sound like when you place one note a certain distance from another. So for the whole step, a good way to memorize this is to think, happy birthday. Happy birth, happy birth, happy birth. Now for two notes up in the scale, this is called a major third, you can use anything that outlines a C major chord to memorize this interval. Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder.
Now for a perfect fourth, you can think later into happy birthday. Happy birthday to, day two, day two. Now for perfect fifth, you can think later into happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to, day two, day two, day two, day two. The perfect fifth is the most commonly used interval. So you can also think about somewhere over my butthole or you can think of Star Wars. Now, past your perfect fifth interval, you have the minor sixth interval. For this, you can think we are young by fun. So let's set the world on fire. On fire. Now your last interval, major seventh beautiful little interval right here very dissonant very nice pure imagination now for octave and major seventh you can think immigrant song okay now that we've ingested all that information about interval let's write ourselves a melody go ahead and put any sound on your channel rack and then open up the piano roll let's do a very pop oriented melody Notice how there are only two intervals in this melody. There is a major third and a whole step. You might be thinking, well, it's totally different over here, isn't it? No, it's just whole step, whole step down, major third down. about intervals. Each interval is either harmonious or dissonant. Harmonious or dissonant. That makes up harmonious chords and dissonant chords. If you have a dissonant note in a harmonious chord, it comes out sounding like a dissonant chord. Harmony is very fragile and dissonance is very infectious. All right, the most basic chord shape is called a triad. One, three, five. One, skip one, skip one. This specifically is a C major triad. It's the root chord of C major. Now, if you take the same shape and you move it one over, you have a D minor, E major, F major, G major, A minor. Shut up. These are the diatonic triads of the C major scale. You might be wondering, what is this? Well, that's actually super simple. That's just a C major, seven, nine, 13, six. Now, why is this a six? The six is normally played like that. Seventh like this, ninth like that, 13th like that. And that's just how we named them in music. So a very common chord you've probably heard is C major seven or the major seventh of the tonic of the one. Now, you have a C minor seventh. That is because you took a minor triad and you added the seventh to it. A minor seven, D minor seven, C major seven, E major seven, F major seven, G major seven. Shut up. So chord extensions aren't that hard. As long as you're only talking about diatonic notes, there's only a triad, 6th, 7th, 9th, 13th. There are non-diatonic things that we won't be getting into because they're not as important for producing FL Studio, but if you were to make jazz, then you would definitely need to know, you know, what a diminished chord is, what you're doing in life. Why are you making jazz? So using those easy chords that we just learned, let's make ourselves a chord progression. Let's start with C major. Notice how all we did was play three major triads. C, E, D. All right, last thing we're gonna do is lay out some drums. What we know about time signature 
let's try to lay out in this pattern some drums that fit with this melody in its time. Start with just putting a kick down. For this, you can count off the beats like one, two, three, and four. So hitting this eighth note is called hitting the and. Putting two things on the same spot is called layering. For beats two, three, and four of the melody, I'm not even hitting the two, three, and four. I'm just hitting the two and, three, and, four, and. Okay. Now you understand the basic music theory behind making music. It's all it is. It's just a time signature where you place notes. Even though this just sounds like something poppy, it wouldn't be that hard to make it into something more trap-esque. Now if you want to see me turn this entire thing into a trap beat, check out this next video on more advanced music theory for more applied producing like trap music.